When I say Muslims or my husbands, they are essentially the people that represents the simplicity of the human. You know, they are extremely intended to be human in structure. And instead of human, I use the word Muslim. So we had uh, this Maya as a graduate. Or Jesus with the baby Christ. So one of these characters that you could see that they are very steady on the ground. And in few pieces, 
I was trying to sort of to make them prone to the kind of space mm. where they are very airborne. Mm. And uh, it's such a movement that was sort of, you know, dimensionally spread in space, evoking a sense of lightness. Mm. And uh, the inseparability of these two characters, that Maya has Musi and the Musi has Maya. Mm. And or Musi itself is a Maya, or Maya also could be a Musi. Mm. So this, this concept was to be established by having them together on a kind of a platform and with the same kind of a similar movement that was thrown into the space. Mm. And, and probably this is the first time these two characters are coming together mm. you know, to share a common space. Because being a student of Kalabhavan doesn't restrict you as one. On one side, you have the naturally happening celebrations in the village structures, which are very different culturally from the people who are coming from the you know different backgrounds as university students on one side. Mm -hmm. And within the university, you have people who are trained, theatre people coming. The idea of coming to Jamdhini itself was like to do the painting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, never thought of becoming a sculptor or I never had the chance even to work on any material, especially any three-dimensional object even, prior to Jamdhini. So, not that I knew much about Shantani other than, you know, that it's a it's a kind of a place where you are, you know, taught the classes are going down the tree and, and so you naturally become one with the nature and a kind of a fantastic environment around. But then um, when I went there, the kind of teachers especially in painting were not the right kind. So why you say right kind? Because you come after a certain amount of training and uh, you naturally want to sort of study under some great so-called masters.
sculptures, not just physical, right? So it's making of an idea. The mm-hmm. idea should be talking about towards this likeness of being. So again, there will be the progression of that work. And then again, we, I think, we'll show more of his works and, you know, him, more of him and uh, all that. And then we have that, uh, especially because him, through him, I also want to, like, of course, emphasize Bench because what will be more exciting has been him speaking about Ramgangar Bench. So that's something very significant and we should try and bring more. Right before my eyes, there were two masters. And Shadwiga Roy Chaudhary was a part of Franklin Tree. There was Ram Kinkar, who lives in the campus and he used to come and work, but not as part of the Franklin Tree. See, what happens is that Ram Kinkar took to doing sculpt, I mean, sculptures of a huge scale, but on the contrary, Shankari used to be like he would talk to you, he would sit under a tree having a cup of tea around and you know, then you can see him doing a little bit of modeling. So while in the middle of the Adda, that you would really sort of come with a kind of a small piece and put it on the table. So it was Ram, it was Shankari who was, you know, wanting me to be working with Ram. Mm. And you know, any no other teacher would let you, you know, to give to get that space in the sense that everybody wants their students to be naturally, you know, in their own space, in their own style, in their own school. But here was someone who was absolutely happy when I told him that I would like to actually work more with Ranking Grand. And so I used to get Ranking Grand, even Shagwiriza helped me to get Ranking Grand to my studio. So sort of to build up a kind of a, a communication with him. And uh, so it was more of a very, very personal friend, personal, a, a kind of a brother, an elder brother like I remember when he cast a sculpture, you know, I mean, he wouldn't mind if I'm also casting something on the side. And uh, because you know that working on bronze is so expensive. So he would want me to finish his bronze. He would want me to do the patina, you know. So in the process that I learned, which are the chemicals needed for getting this kind of a particular green or brown or dry for me to. So most of my lessons, especially working with bronze, was coming from Shabu. And since Ram Kinder never worked on bronze, all his works were like kind of either from clay to concrete or directly working with concrete. So his sculptures were lessons to us, Ram Kinkas. And Shangarida's approach was another lesson. So these two lessons, I mean, or, or, all kinds of this learning process was so important, drawing various things from both these personalities. See, Ram Kinder always spoke about uh, the preparations. So I remember calling him to my studio just to sort of to show him a sculpture. But he was not here. He always says, but show me where have you started? What was it? So he was keen on, you know, looking at those initial drawings, the kind of preparations. Mm. And uh, then I understood that, you see, w- what is invisible? Sometimes I remember he looks at a complete sculpture of someone who completed a sculpture. And then he would take out a knife and start cutting it. And that the person who took probably a month, you know, to complete a sculpture. And here is someone coming and sort of cutting it, dissecting into a kind of a pieces and then to see where he started the structure. I mean, it is very shocking and at the same time it's a tremendous lesson for someone. And probably he was not keen on what you come up with, but what you are going through. So I was working with Ron 
you like naturally or did you like try other medium and you like did it come from the form which you were trying to create or how did it like yeah <coughs> it works both ways because of i work with bronze my sculptures take a kind of a certain kind of set down on the you know yeah. shapes forms because of knowing the fact that it ultimately it's going to be wrong so oh. and um, another way to look at it the sculptures are of this nature that it can be done only in bronze there's no other way because bronze is probably the most durable and also it can really sort of take the whole volume in space even with very minimal contact mm. on the ground no other material will give you that scope and uh, i never felt that one doesn't have to sort of to be modern by using modern methods i mean you can be a modern sculptor uh, with very traditional methods and if you have a, an individual approach and reflecting the time that you live in though it's a very traditional ancient old medium you are trying to sort of uh, exploring it in a manner which is very you know chosen by me as a individual like you have this tiny little figures or individual casts of figures are put together and then sort of go for a trip in space and then you have this various the whole mass of a crowded people which are probably like on the ramp or on the liminal figures they are multiples of different movements taken to a kind of a different height and that's done in a different scale and very different method and then i have sculptures like this which are done much larger than life size or even bigger than that So um, I think the, that the whole understanding of philosophy, if you look at it, that the kind of understanding that we achieved by being with masters like Ramkin Brothers, that um, you know the 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 approach that you take is not to really sort of to to come to a kind of extreme perfection because. it's a process of reaching out to that than you know arriving at that mm -hmm. i mean that's what probably i mean you know we don't look at what's being done but we really still have a lot to do or we are very much focusing on what we are working on so the language uh, the the kind of involvement it becomes um, a, you know a kind of part of the process and that's what probably the journey one you know to to that i think shadbury took to what was there 
like he went into the reading of the song and Frank Kinker went into the music of music part of the sculpture. ইশারায় কইবে কথা গঠে মাঠে দেখিস যেন কেউ না জানে কেউ না বোঝে কেউ না শোনে কিছুদিন মনে মনে কিছুদিন মনে মনে ঘরের কোণে ছানার পীড়িত রাগ গোপনে কিছুদিন মনে something that people who are you know away from home for many years mm. and then with all the kind of ideas that you have in your memory you go back so you go back to your own memories mm. and trying to tally with mm. the reality and then then your moment obviously becomes sort of connected to the way the home is today exists so with the with the way people are sort of moving from one place to the next, certain kind of structures also. It's not only the thought process, but in the real space some structures come out. Physical space. Yeah, physically that. And these structures, how people really make it to their own. It is not something that they preconceive the structure. It's something that they improvise the structure. You know, to the place where they land. And I was I used to always look at the making the basic cubical a kind of an inclusion. I mean you can so if you really you don't see the inside space, yeah. you see the you know the contour of it from seeing it from outside. So this cubical structure is more of a kind of a more a living structure for them. But with all the kind of problems that they have outside and inside. They call it a home. So in this, the whole structure is an ascending one or even to be seen as a descending. Because integrating the very movement of this ascending and descending around a home. So you have the people coming up to a building. But it's not just a building, it's, you know, it's, it's a space of a home. But reaching out to the home is one of the things that we all tend to be doing. You know, like we want to reach the house, to the home. But reaching there, you find that, are you really wanted in that space? Mm -hmm. And here, it's depicted like kind of a closed home. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a door, it doesn't have a window. It's unused. Yeah. Sometimes it's not, it's something that you sort of see it as that you are not invited, you are not wanted or you don't fit yourself to be in a space of that kind. There is certain amount of intuitive space that comes, certain amount of script being written on that stage. The dialogue actually sort of get established, you know, there while placing them, there's a kind of thing. Not necessarily that, but the basic structure, the basic movement as a total structure is there in the mind and that's the guiding force for me to decide who will go where and what will come next to what. So that's a kind of a, an understanding that we establish and it's uh, and ultimately all these understandings between the people or with the people and myself and then that really sort of take me to a kind of a platform of knowledge, knowing them. 
understanding which takes me to an, to really a kind of a different platform of you know creating a kind of a space emotionally connected and also sort of a kind of a space where you really are analytical about it because the whole time that you are working on it there is an analysis that goes on but in a larger way when you look at it after it's sort of being positioned and standing in its space and taking a kind of a, a distancing yourself and then taking a look at your own structure and then you understand where you know what it was meant to be what it has taken or become to be or where we can really sort of further take the you know take the moment take these people further where we can go so there is a kind of a space that really sort of you know taking off from the end of it at the end of that crest of it if you stand and look at it a new space that really gets formed I and mean, that is the space again that I want to create, I want to get into and that's probably one of the reasons I keep making ramps ramps which are never empty ramps which are really sort of gradually you know coming to a kind of a higher level gradually or even the, the, the ramp that gives you scope where you can really sort of effortlessly reach to a kind of a height of unknown Charcoal, you don't have very sophisticated, fantastic quality paper or anything. So you have newspaper that comes in. So with this charcoal and the newspaper, I mean, you could draw the kind of people who are coming. Before they are given anything, I would tell my mother, listen, don't give anything now. I will finish my drawing and then you can give something. 